that's new for Enterprise PDM and SolidWorks Treehouse. Uh, you know, one, uh, one product we've had around for a little while and one that's new this year, uh, both designed to help you communicate your design ideas uh, with various members of your team. So we'll get started and let's start with SolidWorks Treehouse. This is the new product this year that um, is designed to help you build product structures outside of the standard SOLIDWORKS environment. So this can be useful if you have you know, products that have a well-defined structure or you know how the work is going to be distributed among your team members or it can even just help you kind of brainstorm ideas for how, how a product should be put together. So this is the interface and it's pretty simple. I'm just going to start by dragging on an assembly node here and then I can add a part to that with just another drag and drop. So now I've begun to build a product structure. I can add information to this um, right here so I can you know, name my document. I can add custom properties as well. And all these, all these nodes are coming from your, co your company template. So if you have some sort of specific property that you need to include, that's going to be here for you to fill out while you're doing this initial definition. I'm going to name my part here as well so everything has a name. And you can get even more involved. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a couple of configurations for this part so that when we do get to the uh, point where we're doing detailed design, the designer knows exactly what this part should be. And I can even come in here and define which, uh, which uh, configuration I want to use for this particular assembly. So I started a pretty simple structure here. Since these are some new parts, I'll probably need some drawings. So let me just drag some drawings on top of there. And you can see that there are a couple of, um, I can easily access different templates. So if I need a, you know, an assembly template and a part template, I can just click and drag those pretty simply, put those in my structure. I also have the option of adding existing parts to my structure. So let me drag from my Windows Explorer over here and add a couple more things. I can even come in here and change my quantity. So again, I know what this is looking like and I can get all that information in the files. Once I've got my structure built here, I can export it. And you can, uh, you can export this anywhere. I'm going to put it into an EPDM vault, but you don't have to have EPDM to use Treehouse. Um, but it's just a great, uh, EPDM is a great place to, of course, you know, store our work, collaborate with our, our coworkers. So that's where I'm going to put my, my data for today. And you'll see it's going to start adding this information into the vault that is creating these actual SOLIDWORKS files. Uh, if I click on one of these, you can see it actually has built um, all those configurations that I defined right into that file. So we can see that by uh, previewing the data card. And if I look at the assembly, uh, we see the custom properties that I added. So it's building that information right into the files. It's not just a representative um, kind of picture here. And in fact, if I go to check in this assembly, you'll see it actually does have all those file references. It's going to grab all those different files, including the drawings, um, to try and check them in. So it knows about all that. It's built that hierarchy. So um, yes, you can kind of see how that works, a quick interface to start building those things without having to worry about all the, again, all the detailed design kind of things that you may need to do. You usually have to worry about in SOLIDWORKS. This is good also for modifying existing assemblies. So if I take one that's a little more complex here. Um, give me one sec before I do that. I'm going to uh, log in as a different EPDM user. And let me get back to that assembly. And of course, if we're going to modify anything in EPDM, we need to check it out first. So let me do that. Let me just check out all my files. All right, ready to go, ready to modify this assembly. I can get my recent documents and I can drag that in here. And now it's going to build similarly, um, a tree view that I can look. So I can look around in here, see my file information, my configurations, my quantities, um, and a nice, you know, easy uh, user interface. So instead of having to burrow into all these various sub-assemblies and look at these things, um, really easy to look at over here in Treehouse. And like I said, you can use this to modify existing assemblies. So let me just go ahead and build a, another sub-assembly here. So a, one assembly with a part. And again, I need to name my files. So 
so that they can be uh, saved appropriately. I'm using the same names for these parts that I, uh, for the parts I just built a second ago, and uh, that's going to help me illustrate the, some of the new functionality of Enterprise PDM. So, new assembly, new file. I'm going to export back into the uh, the folder where my my existing assembly is. I don't say no on that one. Now you're going to see in the SolidWorks view, it actually is creating these files. They're blank. There's no information, but it is creating them, and it's added that assembly now to my my existing sub or my existing assembly now has this this assembly. So it's modified the actual assembly file. Um, and I've got a warning down here for Enterprise that we'll, we'll look at in just one sec. But um, you can see the Treehouse pretty easy to do those again those product structures get the overall structure figured out. Um, without having to spend a lot of time um, you know, getting into all the little detail things of SOLIDWORKS. Um, so they did put this in my EPDM vault. I'm going to click on that warning I got, and this is telling me that uh, you know, I already have file names with these same names. I told you I'd, I'd name the files the same um, on purpose. So this is a new feature in EPDM 2015. Um, it's always been able to detect duplicate file names, but in the past, in previous versions, you had to wait until you check the file in to get this information. So that could lead to uh, multiple users uh, doing duplicate work because you know one didn't know that the other was already working on that file name. So now, as soon as you add the file, you get that information. Not only that, but if I want to click on these files, it's going to tell me where I can find the, uh, the duplicate, duplicate file name. So I can go um, directly there and figure out you know, which one I should use, how I should handle that. So, uh, that's a great new feature, giving us that information more quickly um, so that we can make the right decisions earlier in our process. Now, since those duplicate file names exist, I'm not going to be able to check in this assembly. I could rename uh, those files to be able to do that, but because I'm in Enterprise PDM, I'm going to come and do an undo checkout instead on that assembly, get rid of those changes. This gives us a chance to look at another new item in Enterprise, which is the version number column. So you can see I've got all my version numbers showing for all my files here. If you've used EPDM in the past, you know that you had previously you'd have to go to each file and look at this version tab to figure out do I have the latest, is it old, um, whatever. So this is a great addition. You can uh, get a view for your entire folder um, at a quick glance. Um, so if I want to do my undo checkout here to get rid of my changes, um, you'll see you know, this icon updating as well. So a whole new set of redesigned icons in EPDM 2015 to make it real clear what's going on with your files. Um, it makes it easier for you, to, for you to get that information. Um, a couple of you know, other user interface updates with uh, EPDM 2015. Wherever we have this tabular kind of data, so the where used tab or the contains tab or the bill of materials tab, there's not better separators between the rows and columns, so it makes it a bit easier to view your data. Also, uh, you get the active thumbnail icons over here on the side so that you can tell exactly what file you're looking at. You don't just have to rely on the file name. The BOM Compare has been improved as well in Enterprise 2015. So before, when there was a change for a file, it would highlight the, the entire row. Uh, now in 2015, it's going to highlight just the specific cell that's changed. So it's a little more clear what's changed, you know, and how to go about, or you know what information you're looking at exactly. If the entire uh, file has been deleted like this one, then it'll highlight all the cells for you. Another improvement in the interface is the copy tree tool. So this is uh, one that people like. It's been around, but now the, they've changed this so the settings area can be expanded and collapsed to make it a bit easier, uh, to make more room for your file list if you need to. Also, the addition of uh, an include simulation box here, so you can put your simulation, you can copy your simulation results without having to do, without having to do a separate search to find those. So that's uh, very convenient. There's an improved filter this year. Um, easily type in what you're looking for and get those highlights. Also, a lot of built-in filters that you can quickly select to, to narrow down to exactly what you're looking for. The, uh, the columns for the folder path and the file name have been separated into their uh, to separate columns now to avoid any accidental renaming of both the folder and the file name at the same time, especially if you're doing something like a replace command. So 
So uh, some, some nice user interface changes there. Another new tool, similar to Copy Tree, is the Move Tree. This, is, this has been requested for a while, and so now we've got it in here in 2015. And you know, very similar interface to Copy Tree, um, but instead of obviously copying, it's going to move an entire product structure for you, or an assembly structure. This is a um, really great addition uh, instead of having to search the vault to find all the related files and move them you know, one at a time or a few at a time. Now just grab it and then move everything at once. So uh, really cool to see that in there. <coughs> Another addition for <coughs> um, as far as getting information quickly is uh, what is called the private state. So kind of like the, the duplicate file names, um, you know, we've been able to, this is giving us information more quickly than in previous versions. Um, in previous versions of EPDM, you'd have to wait until a file was checked in before you knew a user was working on it. Now, if you're an authorized user, if you have the right permissions, you can see a file that's been added to the vault even before it's been checked in. So, again, this is going to help avoid uh, multiple users doing, doing duplicate work. You'll be able to see what files have been added sooner, know what's going on sooner in the process. So, really good addition there. Let me go back to my, my main assembly here and talk about um, one of the big changes as far as doing approvals you know, or transitions. So we've had um, parallel transitions for a while, for a couple of years now in Enterprise 2015. But there's always been a slight issue in that in the capturing the approvals. If you, you know, so if you're doing a parallel approval, you have more than one person who needs to approve a file. Uh, to go through a, a certain transition. And you could do that, but it would always overwrite previous approver, approvals with whoever was the last one to approve it. So um, it wasn't that convenient. But now in 2015, they've improved that. So each approver in the parallel approval, you can capture the name, uh, the date, and even the time that their approval was, was applied. And so this helps us do a much better job of tracking and gathering information for for these uh, these transitions for our files. So you can see here, uh, one user has already approved it. Now as the second user, I can approve it. My file now moves to the released state. And when I look at my data card, you can see both sets of approvals um, have been captured. So that's that's really great. That's going to make uh, things a lot easier for for a number of customers who, who do have a workflow that relies on those multiple approvals. Uh, if we look at that within the, the workflow itself, here's the transition where I'm using those approvals. And there's the changes come in this set variable action. <clears throat> so this set variable action is it's an action that's been around, but it's uh, now been improved a little bit. So here's our map to provers. So this is where we define who is the eligible user for those those parallel approvals. But another new addition here is the version comment box. So here's where you can program basically a standardized comment. So every time a file goes uh, and has this action applied, you can also apply this comment. So this helps build um, a more full file history. Uh, so you can always tell exactly what's happened with the file, um, even apart from just the user entered comments. The increment revision command also has uh, a new box for revision comments. So same thing, helping us build the file history and make that more complete. If we look at the history for this file we've been working with, we can see you know, how that plays in. So here's a couple of lines where we've got that standard uh, type of uh, comment being entered. And so it just you know, fills out this comment section and especially useful for, uh, for automatic transitions where there is no user interaction you can still have it fill in one of these standardized comments um, so that you have that history when you look back. And I'll, to help complete that, um, there's also a comment option now if you're doing a rollback. So before you do a rollback, but um, it wasn't obvious from the history why that was done. So now you can just go ahead and type that in. And so it's easy to tell what's happened, why that rollback had to occur. 
So a lot of new, um, good new places for information and collaboration here in Enterprise 2015. <clears throat> also helping with collaboration is a new web interface. So uh, this is, again, something that you know, we've had a web, web interface for <clears throat> a few years, uh, but now an improved one, which, we, which is being called Web2. Uh, still in beta right now, but they're coming up on you know an official release. The nice thing about about this new web interface, <coughs> excuse me, is that it works with any device that has um, a web browser. It doesn't rely on a specific type of browser. So, you know, whether it's your your computer or your tablet or even your phone, as long as you have a web browser, you can get to your vault not from wherever you have a connection. Once you're in here, you, know, you can you have a list of files. You could just browse for the file you're looking for. <clears throat> it's also um, a nice search box. You could just uh, do a quick search. Get a number of files here, and you know, here's one that doesn't have wheel in the file name. But if we open that up <clears throat> and we look at the data card, we can see that it had wheel in the description. And so this is why it's coming up on our search. So it's cert the, the search box searches several fields at once. So that's pretty convenient. <clears throat> Another nice thing with this new web browser also is the preview that you get when you click on a file. So again, helping you know that you're looking at the correct file or the file that you're, you're aiming for. And then you get information on where used and contains information as well. Uh, if I select the file, I get the option here to check out or I could download the file to work on it. And then I can even you know, do some, some transitions, some approvals here if I'm while I'm remote, so put my comment in, change state, successful. You know, so you can keep keep your project going even if you're away. And speaking of being able to use this on other devices, mobile devices, uh, there is the mobile version. So when you open that, gives you an interface that you can see is just a little bit better for working on, well, as we said, mobile devices. So um, you know, look at a file. You can do state changes here, um, et cetera, um, just in a way that you'll be able to, you know, click on a touch screen a little better, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and that um, concludes the, the what's new for Enterprise PDM and SolidWorks Treehouse. Um, if you have any questions, of course, MCAD's always available to take those questions, provide you more information as needed, and so let us know what else we can help you with.